So now we also have our chocolate ganache that we use on the outsides of cakes and sometimes on the insides of cakes. Erin left this for me so that I could show you a couple of my tips and tricks, but this would have been really great also in his cake jars. This is also fabulous as a frosting for brownies and you can even whip this up and mix it with your buttercreams for a chocolate flavor. There's lots of possibilities. And if you don't do any of that, you just need it for a cake next week, freeze it. But I'm gonna show you our truffles. Now a two to one ganache or a three to one ganache, depending if you're using dark chocolate or milk chocolate or white chocolate, is ideal. You want a stiff ganache. You do not want a one to one. You start with just a little bit of the ganache in your hand. Make sure your ganache is nice and cold and your hands are as well. My hands are not terribly cold right now, but I'm still gonna make this work and I'm gonna take some crushed up cookie, shake it around. You can use any cookie for this. You can use vanilla cracker cookies. Can you, can you take that out since my hands I are dewy? Sure can. You can use crushed. Oreo cookies on this chocolate truffle. Yep. How about Biscoff cookies? Yum. Any kind of crispy dessert cookie, crush it up, put it over top of your ganache. Delicious. Mm. We had these left over, so just as well use them. Yep. Or you can go absolutely classical and take your truffles and roll it in cocoa powder. This is the classic way to serve truffles. Now, the only thing I'll tell you, let these sit for a little while. Let that ganache crystallize again, just like we talked about on the outside of the cakes. Once it crystallizes and becomes a little bit more firm and able to be picked up without kind of going, because you got hot hands, you've got a great little after dinner mignardi to serve to anyone at your table. That's a pretty fancy word, Kara. Welcome to my world.